You have clicked on this video because you've just watched the Global Championship in Copenhagen and you've seen a duo raise that first place trophy, get all the fame and praise that they deserve, as well as 500k straight into the bank account and you want a piece of that for yourselves and I cannot blame you. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys a no bullshit approach to improving at Fortnite and how you can go ahead and eventually reach that tier one pro status that requires an insane amount of work to be put in. We are currently six years deep into Fortnite. A lot of you guys are new getting into comp. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can level up and get your skills to that pro level. Just for some context, I've been coaching this game for four years now. I've coached over a dozen different individual FNCS winners. I've coached hundreds of players, their first earnings, and I've coached dozens and dozens of players into that sort of pro level where they're making a good amount of money off this game every single season. I know what I'm talking about. There's probably nobody in the world who has more experience with this topic than me. So I'm going to give you guys everything I know in this one video. Let's get into it. All right, first things first for a bit of time scale, guys. This is not something that's gonna happen within one season. If you do everything in this video, and let's say you apply it next season, of course, you're gonna have a better season. You're gonna make more money than you made this season. You're gonna be able to either get your first earnings or Honestly, I think you can easily make 500 if you go ahead and apply what I say. However, that is not a pro status player, of course. You are trying to compete against the best players in the game who have gone ahead and got five years worth of experience. They've been playing scrims, they've got the best coaches, and they've got all that experience in terms of finals lobbies, and it compounds on each other and allows them to stay at the top. What you're trying to do is catch up and get yourself in a position where you can begin to start competing against them in a grand finals type lobby. So let's go ahead and lay out the roadmap of how you want to do this to put yourself on the best position possible. Our very first stop on our roadmap to going pro is to go ahead and win as many games in solos in a single season as possible. I want you guys to put 100% focus into just solos for one season and see where you can go ahead and take yourself. Solos are the absolute fundamental building block to all other skills that apply in other modes. Knowing how to win off spawn so you don't waste any games in those three game finals. Knowing how to rotate, knowing how to win fights versus good players in a stats lobby. Knowing how to go ahead and get refreshes, knowing how to rotate end game, knowing how to take kite and win the game, as well as dealing with awareness, dealing with improving your confidence. All of these skills that apply over to every single other thing are gonna come just from solos. And it's the best opportunity at the moment to make money. Earning money in solos is so important. First of all is it allows you to reinvest in yourself. The best investment that you can make with the money that you make from competitions is either going back into your PC, getting additional specs like getting a new mouse or a new keyboard that's gonna help you play better, getting a new monitor, or even getting some coaching from a good coach like Frey or Zycoma, just to name a few, or even getting a masterclass or something that's gonna help you learn more about the game. Once you start earning money, you can reinvest that money and hopefully you should be able to double or triple that investment that you make within a short period of time since you're playing better. You're also gonna get that massive boost of confidence is really important and thirdly you're going to go ahead and prove yourself to the people around you whether that's your parents who don't really like you sitting around playing Fortnite a day making no money or whether it's going to be your friends who don't think you're that good just for some examples Vadil was an absolute nobody and he went ahead and placed fourth in a solo cash cup he carried on playing did all right in some others and then placed fourth again and then from that placement he was able to turn it from playing with some random Italian guys you can see here into going ahead and doing no Riley after even more solo placements he placed fourth three times in solo cash cups. Obviously, the prize pool was better back then, so he was able to invest in himself more. However, this is exactly what can happen nowadays. Another example is Reason, who was an absolute bum during World Cup, only made $100 during World Cup, which is pretty embarrassing, to be honest. And then he went ahead and placed eighth in a solo cash cup. Then he won an entire solo cash cup later on the season. And of course, from there, he was able to upgrade get better teammates, as well as reinvest in himself. Now, the most easy and simple way to improve at solo is to go ahead and find yourself on the leaderboard of the most recent solo cash cup. If you qualified for the finals, and I'm assuming you didn't win the game if you're watching this video, go ahead and click on your match history and take a look at those three games. If you guys didn't qualify for opens, what I want you to do is find the three games where you missed out on the most points, whether you died going for Ireland or whether you went ahead and died off spawn, Find those games where you're missing out points and you should be doing better. Next, what I want every single player watching to go ahead and do is to click on themselves on the leaderboard and click match history. And you're gonna write down on an actual piece of paper next to you or on a post-it note with an actual pen, write down one, two, and three, and you're gonna figure out the three major mistakes that prevented you from making money. So the mistake number one that this player checks he made is to go ahead and he went ahead and died off spawn and he's wasted an entire third of his final games. He's thrown away 33% of his chance of making $100. 
for how do you fix that early game death? First things first, really simply, just spend two hours a day playing solo rank, practicing your initial off spawn, as well as fights in that area. You need to go ahead and play solo rank for two hours a day until you will not die off spawn anymore, and you know that place at the back of your hand, and then that means in tournaments, you're never gonna die off spawn again. You can also go ahead and do off spawn 1v1 customs or 1v1v1 customs versus other players who land at that spot if you want even better practice. So write down the mistake as well as how you're going to fix it throughout the coming week before the next tournament. The next mistake here is dying about 20 minutes in as we get into those partial zones. So clearly there's a mistake or a rotate hit that got them killed. I would recommend going into your actual game, figuring out what the specific mistake is and be as specific as possible, as well as some broader mistakes that you might have made. So let's say you were too late on your rotate and you wasted your mobility beforehand and that caused you to go ahead and go down. Figure out what the mistake is as well as think how can I improve this whether it's going to go ahead and play some solo customs throughout the week and figure out what you can do and how you can turn your rotates or whether it's to go ahead and do more of reviews. Now for the second thing to fix this is about a sixth and seventh rotate that they've messed up. You can see they've got a decent amount of kills how they've gone ahead and went down on a rotate later on in the game. So many players would go ahead and watch the replay back and go oh it was unlucky I couldn't do anything how they're missing the point of actually trying to improve. You're not fixing the specific mistake that you make, but you're trying to be more general and think, oh, why did this mistake actually happen? Am I in a bad position on this zone? Am I rotating too late? Am I not going early enough? What is the actual cause for this mistake that's causing me to go down and again, waste an entire game as an opportunity to make $100? Focus on being more general when you're fixing these mistakes and how you can go ahead and improve them. So for this mistake, easily go ahead, vod you the game back, watch other players that rotate successfully, figure out what mistakes you made in your game earlier on and how you can go ahead and change that next week. And for this final mistake, this is one that a lot of players make, is getting into a situation around top four, they've got loads of kills, final moving zone, and they go down. Instead of focusing again on that specific mistake going down, maybe they lost a 1v1 at the end. However, why are they not in a top two situation with eight kills? So that's what I'm thinking. What are they doing to not be in a position where they've got a win condition going? Either they've claimed low or they've gone ahead and done a height take and executed properly third moving. Why are these factors not coming into play earlier and how can you go ahead and improve them? What I'd recommend doing for a mistake like this is to go ahead and vod you games back from either the guy who won the game in your lobby or other players. What do they do differently from you in those top five situations to go ahead and close the game out? and make money. And you've got your post-it note with three different mistakes that you're making. How can you go ahead and not make these mistakes again? But of course you need to fix them. Figure out what is the cause of those mistakes as well as how can you improve it? If it's something off spawn or early game fighting, just go ahead and play ranked, land at your off spawn spot as I said, it's gonna improve you the fastest possible. If you're late, maybe losing 1v1s against good players, you can just go ahead and do speed realistics versus good players get fighting crack that way. If you're losing out on the island fight when it comes to your first game of the cash cup, just do island realistics. There's a lot of different creative maps you can do to get the fastest prac possible in. If you're not able to get your cash and you're losing a 1v1 for cash in finals, go ahead and queue up cash realistics and practice having fights for your cash. If you're doing mistakes later on in the game, whether it's rotates or not knowing how to rotate mid game, go ahead and play solo customs and go ahead and practice getting that experience in. And other things like how to go ahead and win games, win conditions, go ahead and rod you and figure out what you did wrong. Make sure whenever you are practicing and whatever mistakes you're trying to work on, you're being mindful of what you're trying to fix. And you're just not just mindlessly playing. This will allow you to be as efficient as possible and overcome those players above you. Now, all you need to go ahead and do is repeat this for an entire season and you're going to be in the best possible mindset to go ahead and place as much as possible. And let's talk about what you should do the next season after. Now, the next stop on our roadmap to going pro is to find a good duo. Hopefully you guys have got a few hundred earned at least from playing solo cash cups and placing in them. And if you haven't got to that level, you're probably not going to get a decent duo that's going to allow you to make finals. The key thing when you're looking for a duo is you need to find somebody on a similar solo skill level as you. So somebody who's placing a similar amount to you, as well as something that suits how much you want to grind the game, as well as how much you want to go ahead and actually improve. There's no point playing with somebody who's better than you if they're not able to put the work in because you're going to be limited at the end of the day. Just an example of a player who's done this very recently, just this year. This is Jake Booker, who went ahead and had zero earnings at the start of this current year in January. And as you can see, they went ahead and started placing solo cash cups in February. Just a quick plug, they do have the master class, of course. So they went ahead and placed 21st and they've got loads of placements in solos under the belt while we're not playing with the best teammates, as you can see. They've gone ahead and placed loads of times in solos. They've earned over a grand just from solo cash cups. And now they're in a position, as you can see, as we get a little bit more recently, they 
they can go ahead and swap from playing with somebody not really at their skill level that they've sort of overtaken with into getting a better teammate who's also putting that work in, also got a similar mindset about grinding the game. And then now they've gone ahead and placed multiple times. They've qualified top 50 three times in a row, as well as placed top 30 in every single finals. And again, that is just what you need to do. You need to place in solos. You need to get a better teammate that's going to have that similar grinding mentality to you. And then that is going to allow you to build up chemistry and place very quickly there genuinely is no point playing with somebody who is way better than you or somebody who is not really at your skill level because you're just not going to be able to cook with that now after you've gone ahead and found a duo with a good mentality about improving you need to go ahead and repeat those exact same solo improving tips into duos so after every single cash cup that you've played together you need to go ahead and find the three games that costed you points so right here, this is a duo that I've actually known for a while. As you can see, they go ahead, don't really drop a big game to start, but they have a, still a very good start to their tournament. The key thing is though, they have two mistakes or spawns. They need to fix their spawn. Might not seem like the biggest deal, but that's an extra about five minutes wasted on off spawn fights where they're gaining zero points. Then there are absolutely two major wastes of time in these games here, which is clearly high low games. They're making mistakes with rotates. They're getting punished too much and they're able to go down. Go into replays for exactly what the mistake is, as well as some broader mistakes. And you're gonna come out of it with three things you need to work on. For this team, that's gonna be off spawn as mistake number one, as well as their sixth and seventh zone rotates, as well as getting refreshes later into eighth and first moving. So they're not as shambles going down this early as you can see here these guys are really close to qualifying for the actual cash cup they only need about 20 or so points and they could easily do it just fixing some mistakes now after a few weeks of fixing mistakes you guys should be at a point where you're going ahead and consistently getting top 50s it's really important that when you get these top 50s you get that finals experience cracking where you can fix your mistakes in finals however you've got to remember the finals lobbies are very different to opens so it's important to have separate mistakes that you need to work on in both for this duo that I mentioned earlier, they managed to qualify three finals in a row. As you can see here, there's still a couple mistakes. There's still these 20-minute games where they're dying early. And if they didn't clutch up this last game, this could easily not be a cash cup qualify because they messed up these two games right here, as well as, again, a few off spawns that they need to fix up. Now, as you get into more finals and qualifying for these finals more consistently you're going to get onto the radar of organizations which are very important just for getting more income for yourself as well as you're going to get that finals experience cracking that hopefully you can use to build up your confidence for an upcoming fncs next year now the next step on our roadmap to going pro is going to be qualifying for an fncs finals the key thing that pretty much all of the top duos do at the start of any fncs season is they grind an insane amount at the very very start they get ahead of the meta compared to other players. They know exactly what they're going to do, where they're going to land, how they're going to rotate. And this means that at the very start and the first few tournaments of the season, especially that week on FNCS, they are already ahead of the other players. You need to put the work in at the very start of the season with you and your duo and be playing an insane amount if you want to go ahead and qualify. You need to do well week one of FNCS to have that confidence going into the rest of the weeks. Otherwise, there's basically no chance that you can come back and go ahead and let's say qual and do well in the next two weeks because it's not going to be enough series points to even make heats now once you've gone ahead and got that confidence from the first week you should have an easy job of qualifying in the second two weeks if you just keep on fixing those three mistakes each week all you're trying to do is get one percent better each time you play a tournament and by the end of the year you're going to be in such a better position than when you started now once you're actually qualified for the fncs you need to put an insane amount of work in for your off spawn and your surge plan realistically a first fncs nobody's really going to expecting a top 10 it can be done it's very unlikely however but i'd instead focus on just trying to place top 25 to get yourself a good paycheck from doing well in that fncs put loads of time into winning our spawn if you're contested doing off spawns getting a good drop map going ahead and practicing and learning all your surge routes and the surge routes of teams around you so you're going to give yourself as many advantages as possible going into your first ever finals once you get that sort of top 25 hopefully from finals no matter the region you're playing on you're going to be able to use that to springboard your career into making more consistent finals you've got that again that massive grand experience and you're going to be able to use that to consistently place and then now you're basically at at the point where you can call yourself a pro player you probably signed to an organization you've probably gone ahead and made loads of finals and of course it all starts with that base of solos transferring that into getting a good duo transferring that into making finals by fixing mistakes and then now you're in a position where you can call yourself a professional esports player